Hey friends, welcome back to the Krusty Cranks lure painting videos and today we're going to be doing CC004, the blue green shad. Alright, so we're going to start off with some uh, Wicked Pearl White and we're going to hit that real good with the Wicked Pearl White and then we're going to put some mesh on there and we're going to hit a couple more colors. So stay tuned and we'll get you going on this one. Okay, as before, when I paint the pearls, I like to put in a little 4012, a little uh, reducer. It just helps that pearl flow a little better. A couple drops of that, mix it up. Um, I use a couple toothpicks, usually a toothpick, mix it all up real good. And it just helps that pearl flow. That pearl essence in there it wants to tip dry sometimes, clog up your tip. And um, I'm going to shoot this one with about 25 pounds of pressure because I'm going to coat the whole thing. And I'm doing this on a square bill. See how nice, nice that pearl flows on there. You don't need a lot. We're going to cover most of it, but we definitely want to get the belly real good. And we'll probably have to come back and hit a little white just to hide the screen mesh where it drifts down. But we'll see what it looks like. I painted this one once before and uh, had a customer order this. So I thought, well, I better do a video on it. So we're going to hit that pearl real good. And we're going to dry it because we're going to put the mesh on and we don't want to scratch the pearl. Get a nice liberal coat of it on there since I got enough in my, in my brush. Alright. I'll dry it and we'll bring you right back. Okay, so next we're gonna we're gonna stretch this this mesh on here and give it kind of a scale pattern. On I've been using a bunch of different size meshes. Um, this one in particular is from a, a garlic bag. So if you go to your grocery store and you look um, for the small garlic, you'll see these little fine garlic bags and it's got a fine mesh on it and the nice thing about these is they're pretty they're pretty durable so they'll hold up for a while you'll get a few paintings out of them and they're kind of flexible so I, the more I stretch it the more I can get uh, a bigger pattern and I'm going to be using I'm going to be using these clips I've got a few different kinds of clips it just depends on how tight I want to get it. Um, and I've been trying these different types of clips to see which ones work the best. Um, if I've got a big bait, um, I like to do the bigger clips. And um, I'm not really going to do too much around the face, so I'm not too worried about the face. But I'm going to go ahead and stretch it tight anyway just to keep my shape the same that way I can keep my pattern pretty even so a couple of these pulling it tight just to keep my pattern uniform tuck it and roll it and I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the face anyway with a over with a little overcoat after I get it done so no big deal on the face 
tucking it back here it's kind of the same way towards the tail I'm gonna I'm probably gonna put a little shading on top of it so I'm not too worried about the tail either but just to hold it down and hold it in place and these little clips are nice because you can kind of pull and tuck them and still get and still get a fairly even look and it'll hold pretty tight also you can pull it down over top of that that uh, hook tie and that kind of helps it hold in place as well okay so we're gonna hit this with some yellow we're using createx we're using createx transparent bright yellow All right and we're not going to dry this we're going to spray this on and it's still going to be kind of wet and then we're going to hit it with the blue and that'll create that little green green vignette of color All right. let's get our, get our yellow coming out and I'm going to turn my pressure down because I don't want to spray under if you blow real hard spray real hard you'll Sometimes you'll blow under your mesh a little bit. Let's see, I got a little bit right there. I probably need one more clip. Let me get one more clip on here. And like I said, I'm probably going to come back over with a little white on the bottom of this anyway. So I'm not too worried about if the if the yellow f fades down too much but I do want it to stay even my scale pattern so getting my clips on there nice and also gives me something to hold on to okay so there we go. Again, this is just a garlic mesh bag. Um, and we got a, we're shooting about 15. And I'm just going to come down. Leave a little bit of that yellow bleed down the side. It's not going to take much at all. Okay, and like I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dry that. I'm gonna go right to the blue. So I'm gonna clean out my brush real quick, and get some blue in there, and I'll bring you right back. Okay, so next color we're gonna do is bright blue, Createx bright blue, and it's a transparent as well. So we're going to come back over top of that with a little bright blue. Turn our pressure down even more. A little bit. We're going to shoot this at about 10. And we're just going to hit that back. And let that blue blend in with that yellow to make a nice little green down the sides. see those two colors blending together and I 
I'm going to leave that little bit of yellow trim come down the side there. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to hit the camera. Let's hit this nose. Around the eye. And we're going to come back over as soon as we take the mesh off. We want to get that blue deep at the top, but we're going to come back and cover up the scale marks anyway on the top. So, all right, I'm going to dry it this time. Before I remove the mask, I want to make sure it's good and dry so we don't scratch it up. Don't hold your dryer too close because you will shrink that mask or you'll melt it to your boat. You don't want to do that. Sorry about the dryer, but I did want to bring that point across. The other thing is, is I don't want to dry it too much to dry that yellow out so I get that nice blending of the yellow and the blue. You'll see that when I take the mesh off. But also you can shrink your mesh and then when you hit your next color, it's gonna it, you're gonna cover up your screen. So um yeah. So let's take this off and let's see what it looks like. I'm really liking the way those are blends are coming together. Right here, we got a pull kind of easy. Wow, I'm liking that. Nice. Nice. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit a little blue around the eye. And we're going to come down the back just a little bit. We're going to leave this pattern to the side. Okay, so we're going to get the face, we're going to get the gill plates, and we're just going to put a little strip of blue down the back just to cover that. So we're just going to still use the same transparent blue. Holding it kind of close. So I don't spread it out too much. I want to get that dark blue down the back. Hitting the air too, so it dries it. And let's get the eye. Little girl on the gill plate. The other side, get the eye. Little girl on the gill plate. And a little bit under the chin. Really liking that colors. Let's hit the tip of the tail a little bit. Remember, you can always build your color. Just go light. Kind of almost got that metallic look to it now. It's a little darker gill plate. But I like how that green comes into the gill. Okay. See a little bit of scale pattern still there. So I'm hitting air and paint. So I kind of dry it so it don't run. But the transparents are pretty good. 
Wow. Really liking that second time. Yeah. Okay, let me dry this and um, let's see what else we got to put our shad dot on there. Um, so let me dry this and I'll bring you back for the shad dot. Okay, got her all dried, got our brush cleaned out. Um, actually, we're going to black, so we didn't really need to clean it out. Um, but what I wanted to show you was, here's what we're using for a shad dot. And I got this off Amazon. It's just a circle guide. It's got all different kinds of circles. So, you know, future reference, if you get one of these, is you can have all different kinds of shad, size, shad dot sizes. Excuse me. I know a lot of people just use a hole punch, um, but the nice thing about this is I can vary the sizes of my shad dots based on the size of my bait that I'm painting. So I left that kind of open to show you all the different sizes, and and uh, I cover it with the painter's tape, and um, that way I can uh, pick whatever size dot I want to use just by peeling off the painter's tape. Um, this for crankbaits, square bills the three inch square bills I like to use uh, this size dot right here as you can see I've used it before um, so yeah if you're looking for shad dots you know this is one way to create them um, we'll show you in future videos different ways to use them but you can use a q-tip you can use a, the end of an exacto you can there's tons of things you can use to make shad dots but this is my go-to when I want to make a nice shad dot so um, we're going to put this shad. The other thing is, is by leaving this on tape right here, I can use that to line up where my shad dot goes each time. So um, I'm going to take it off of here and put it on my rubber pad. I love using this rubber pad. If you guys haven't seen me, I'm sure if you watched the other videos, you've seen me use this. But this is pad was particularly cut out for this bait right here. So what I do is I cut it out just so it gives me something to recess my bait down in and set it set it down and then I cut both sides so I can flip it over and put it in the other side um, so let's put her and I, I can kind of tilt it a little bit if I'm working on a side or using a stencil or something that I want to put put uh, put on there but I'm going to use this and almost I just kind of cover up put it right line it up with right, right where my eyeball is if I want to put it there um, if I want to put it higher up, I can use the line on the bait right there. Um, but I think this one I kind of want to put just behind the gill. Um, so I can get it the same every time. I just use this little guide right here. See where my eye is. And um, I'm going to put it right there and use the guide to line up my eye. Get my black going. I better put the black in there first. Okay, a couple drops of black because I'm only going to need a little bit. Just enough to cover my needle. Alright. And not splatter on me. Turn my pressure down so I don't blow it up under the stencil. Okay. Then I just come straight down, hold my stencil down tight. Have a little hit. Give it some air and dry it out before I move my stencil. And lift it up. Nice little shad dot. Okay. Flip her over. Same thing, flip it around, put it about right where my eye socket is. Let's see, let me tilt it a little bit, just so I can see it a little better. Use that on my line, push it down on there. Hit it a little bit, give it some air, dry it real good, lift 
dropped it off. There we go. I was a little, a little lower on that side, but fish ain't gonna be able to tell. All right. Okay, I think we're gonna go with the gold and black eye on this one. So let's try it and let's get our eyes on there. Okay. All right, we're gonna go with the gold and the black eye on this one. Um, Sorry, got it on my knife there. Again, I'm using the Gorilla Super Glue with the brush. I just like the brush. So if you hear a little thunder, we got a little storm going on here. I like to use the brush because I can just touch and spread a little bit out where I want it. And then I can put my eye in place. And let's see, this one's offset a little bit, so we're going to have him looking, we're going to make him look forward on this one. Touch the eye. Then I use my little burnisher tool right here. Put that eye in place. There it is. I know when, I, when you're starting out, like a lot of times putting the eyes on, it's a touchy, tricky thing sometimes when you're first learning. Which is one thing I learned about the brush. It just when you got a little eye socket like that, you can put it in there. You don't need a lot anyway. It's already got adhesive on it. But it just keeps me from blobbing a big old blob of glue on there because you know sometimes your super glue dries up you clean it out you either don't get enough or you get too much it's just kind of tricky um so that's why i like using the brush it just helps me control my super glue a little better all right we're going to put this one pointing forward too looking forward Slip it off of there. Get it in place. Then I take my burnisher tool, push it down in there, make sure I got it in there real good. And there we go. He's ready for ready for epoxy. All right. The other thing I didn't, because this is the first crankbait, um, some people paint their bills. Um, I got a video coming up where I'm going to be painting a bill. But this one, um, particular one, I tape it off with the blue painter's tape. Um, as you can see, the eyes are pointing forward. Um, I, but, uh, yeah, I think we're ready to, for some epoxy. All right. I'll bring you back and we'll do the epoxy. Okay, let's give this guy a little dip in the solar res. I always like to go down in twice just to make sure that I get the whole thing covered. I got a drip line on the top or on the bottom and then I'm going to flip it over and put a drip line on the top. And a hook. Look at the color popping out on that. Let's get a little closer. Look at them blues come out now. All right, hang it up for the drip a little bit, and then we'll put her in the booth. Okay, there it is. First coat. Let's get it in. The UV booth. 
30 minutes. We'll coat it again and we'll bring you back to show you the finished lure. Okay, here's the finished lure. Two coats of soil res on it. And um, here's what we, a little recap on what we used. We used the garlic mesh from the garlic bag. Colors we used were this Createx Opaque White, Wicked Colors Createx Pearl White, Createx Transparent Bright Yellow, Createx Transparent Bright Blue, and Createx Opaque Black for the shad spot. And we used a yellow iridescent eye with black pupil okay i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you haven't please hit the subscribe button and give us a ring on that notification bell and definitely give us a thumbs up if you like this video all right until next time my friends stay crusty mm -hmm.